today's 3D print. Somebody was curious about the flashlights I was using. Um, I don't know what the model numbers are. I'll have links for Amazon for these. Um, they're not that expensive. I, I wouldn't call them crazy cheap, but they're not expensive. This thing is ridiculous, but it's got three LEDs in there. It takes six AA batteries. I got it because it was crazy bright, it was metal, and it was new. I have a, a thing for flashlights. So, if you look under here, pop. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid bright. You just see me using it on low, and um, but I use that because I couldn't find my primary flashlight, which is this one. It's like 20 bucks. It's all aircraft grade aluminum. It's good quality, two AA batteries. And the important thing with this one is not only is it small and takes AA batteries, but it's simple on off. <laughs> so no stupid modes to drive you crazy. So this is good for, as you can stick it underneath here to see your nozzle so you can see what it's doing so you know it's printing right. See, there it is. But um, that's what I use them for because you can't see. I'm still trying to figure out a way to mount LEDs on here. Just two little LEDs to um, um, what I need is a flat LED that I can make go one way. So I can just mount two little flat LEDs right on the front of this box here, aimed backwards. So it'll light up the print as it's printing. That's what I really need. This is just my um, motor retention. You can see they just they just pop right off. Even, usually I can even pop them off while it's printing. Not always. That one's going to take a little more force to get off. But you can see the rest of these just come right off. And um, I see something else I got that was pretty neat. I just got this off Amazon and I freaking love this thing. This is, um, it was cheap too. Um, it's indoor outdoor temperature and hygrometer. You set it for Celsius or Fahrenheit. I use Fahrenheit, of course, because I'm in the US. But um, see right here, it's um, 75 degrees and 38% humidity. And I'm at 25, 26% humidity. Where at? Oh, that's in a bag of PET GM drying out. <laughs> so the Zyro filament comes with these nice Mylar bags. So I keep them all. And there is my rechargeable. Um, silica pack so you plug that into a wall it's got a plug that flips out on the back and you plug that into a wall outlet and it's got a heater inside so it can cook all of the um, moisture out of the unit and then I toss this and the wireless transmitter into the bag and seal it up so that'll help me dry out my pet G and I can see what the humidity is in the bag so it's 25 26 percent it was 25 percent that went up to 26 I'm assuming it's pulling moisture out of the um, the PETG. I hope that's what it's doing. So we'll see. But that's pretty cool. It's nice. I just found out that I can connect this to multiple um, units, switching channels, and it'll auto switch between the three of them. Like I had, I kept it kept turning off them. I was like, what the hell? And I realized it was actually changing channels one, two, and three. So I got to see if I can get more of the little transmitters to go with this. That would be very handy. Um, and somebody had asked about the little E action cameras. Um, they have them in white, black, and the green, blue. I got the green, blue, of course, because I like bright colors. Screw regular colors. <laughs> but um, I'll post a link for those, too. Uh, I already got a link to the pliers I use. These are great little pliers for reaching in there and grabbing that little errant. Obviously, you couldn't see that. Great for reaching in there and grabbing that errant little plastic, bit of plastic that's stuck on your nozzle. So it stops that from being a pain in the butt. And this is very cool. This is a super beefy but miniature tripod. So hang on a second while I pull this out of the bag. You guys are going to love this. This is great if you want to record your own videos. Here it is. Here it is the tripod. This thing is freaking great. Um, I don't know if you can see it. But um, yeah, you have your pan head tilt. All right. You could tighten this up to make it a little more restrictive so it doesn't wobble so easily. But really smooth action for a cheap tripod. It's been a long time since I found a tripod this cheap. It has such a smooth action. Usually when I get a cheap tripod, it's like, eh, 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 as you're moving, it's a pain in the ass. But uh, super short little legs. It actually does, it's not, a, it's not a big tripod, even though it's got legs. It's very short. You know, your, your neck can increase a little bit right here. You can see you get about... I think it's 21 inch max, so it's very, very short. So there's your max height there. 
Let me extend the legs for you so you can see that. And there you go. Very short little tripod, 21 inches. That's the maximum it goes right there. But this here is great if you want to aim down for something you're working on on your table. So if you want to have it sitting next to you on your desk and you want to look down on something, or if you want a camera to aim at you, you just shorten everything down and you keep it a short little tabletop tripod. This thing is great. And you can see how beefy these arms are. They're just super thick and beefy. I, I like it. It's very strong. It's very smooth. This is a kick-ass tripod if you need a little tabletop tripod. Another thing I like about this tripod is a little hook on the bottom here. This is great. Um, I believe, I'm not an expert at this part of it, but I believe this is typically so you can tie it down so you can secure the tripod and keep it from moving. But I love these hooks because I can hang stuff from it. So I have a, a, little, a little bag that I hang from here with a couple extra batteries and cables, whatever I need for the camera. So, or, you know, put an extra memory card and a couple extra batteries in there. So when I'm shooting, if I run out of power, I can, um, change it out pretty easily but as is typical it does have a couple of flaws that bug me including one real nasty one that I'm going to show you right now as is typical you have your little um, quick release plate so the plate attaches to the camera and then um, you swivel this handle here to pop the camera in and out except it's one way you can take it out but you can't put it in See that problem right there? See that little spin tab right there? Well, you can't put the camera in horizontally because when you do this, the little spin tab comes down. And that spin tab coming down actually stops you from inserting it into the plate. That's a pain in the butt. Um, two ways I can fix that. I can tighten that up a little bit. I can put some goop in there. Um, like literally just take a little hot glue and put it in there and then wiggle it back and forth a little bit so that that has enough friction that it doesn't spin down like that. Or um, um, I could shape that so that it's a curved edge so it doesn't have a flat edge so that when it hits that it gets pushed one way or the other. That's just a little design flaw and not a big deal. And um, the other issue is that, uh, and this is common to every single one of these, even the ones with the little micro plate have the same problem. It blocks the damn battery cover. So you actually have to remove the plate to change the battery. That could be a bit of a pain in the butt, but I have yet to find a single tripod that doesn't block the plate. So <laughs> they all do that. They all block the battery cover. Um, let's see what else. If you're at all like me, you have um, a lot of gadgets and you power them all off USB. I even have chargers for all of my cameras that run off USB and I like powering things by USB. So I have a lot of these battery packs, these 10, 15, 20, 30,000 milliamp battery packs. And, um, well, you need to see if they're legit, whether they're garbage and or whether they put out the rated power they're supposed to put out. And that's where gadgets like this come in handy. This is a new one I just got. And I love it because it has USB-C. So USB in and out and USB-C in and USB-C out. And they are also interconnected. So you can go C in and USB out. So this here is a load cell. Basically, it burns power. <laughs> it's all it does. It, it, it chews power. So you turn it all the way down. You plug this into this. Hang on a second. There we go. This one's particularly neat because it has a little thing that tells you how much um, power you have. Let me put this back into zoom in mode. There we go. So you can see we're putting out 5.09 volts at 0.08 amps. And now I take this load cell and I start turning it up. Ooh, something got reset. Ah, too low a power. There we go. I waited too long to turn it up. There we go. This automatically turns off if the power draws too low. So here I can turn. Let's see. Will this put out two amps? There's two amps. So it does put out a full two amps. What about 2.4? Uh, no, it's still going. There's 2.4, so but you can see the voltage is starting to drop off. 4.82 volts, 4.77 volts, so I'm hitting its max. So this is really a 2 amp output, okay? But this one also has a QC port, and this will also measure that. Now, usually the USB-C port puts out a little more juice. So let's plug it into the USB-C port. 
Um, I'm assuming this is in and out. Yes, it is. So plug this into the USB-C port. Now we got my 5.1 volts. Let's turn up the power. I'm turning the dial up. One and a half amps. We're still at five volts. And it looks like we get to two amps and we're still holding five volts. Now I don't know if this has a three amp output. Let's test it. There's 2.5, 4.97 volts. That's good. And looks like it will put out three amps. There we go. Turning it back down. I don't want to damage anything. The voltage dropped a little bit, but it's still holding 4.9 volts at 3 amps, which is not bad. That's pretty good. So this is a good battery pack. has a good rated output. This also lets you test your chargers and stuff like that. So you can plug this into one of your wall chargers that claims to put out a certain amount of power and see if it actually puts out that amount of power. And um, you can't use your devices to test the power output because your devices are intelligent. They will vary the amount of power put out. They'll, they will vary the amount of power they consume based on what they think that device can give them, what that device tells them they can give it, the voltage. So if the voltage drops too low, they'll take less power and then they might just go into a trickle mode. This allows you to finally adjust the amount of power consumption so that you can check voltage and amperage to see how much these battery packs can actually put out. So the output on the USB is a little lackluster. I wouldn't go past two amps, but it does do three amps and maintains 4.9 volts, which is really good. This other battery pack I have here, this RAV Power one is badass. It puts out a full three amps on the USB-C port and it holds the volt. This one's nice because it gives you a readout. It's not as high a capacity, but it's a nice little unit. And for us 3D printing guys, this is my favorite memory card reader. It's Kingston, it's all metal. And the cool thing about this reader is it's an all metal USB 3.0 reader that has both a full size SD card slot there and on this side, it has a micro SD card slot. So no adapter needed. You can drop either kind of card in there and read it on your computer. I use a little um, four way extension pod like that you can see I have the thing plugged into it right there that came with the um, with one of the printers so I think I think that that came with the in e10 I think the two black ones came with the ender twos but um this is a nice little reader and it's not expensive it's all aluminum just this end is plastic this is all machine aluminum you can see it's really nice quality and you have your full size SD card and your micro SD card slot so you don't have to use any kind of an adapter that's really handy if you're doing a lot of 3D printing, just swapping memory cards. That's nice. That's it. I will see you guys later.